swell Al. With your swell. Hope you're swell. Hope you're doing great. Hope you're doing amazing. Hope you're wavy, hope you're wavy. Hope you're doing great. I um this morning I watched uh, the the Donald Trump rally in the South Bronx. Oh my God, that hole was packed. It was like twenty thousand people. They said twenty plus thousand. There was a lot of people. It was very diverse too. Blacks, whites, Hispanics, men, women, old, young. It was beautiful. It was truly, truly amazing to see. There's this narrative that the only people that support um, Trump are like uh, these hillbillies. Hillbillies seen as a slur. No offense to anyone from places like Alabama or any of those places. But you know, that's the term they use. Like, oh, only these uh, these Christian hillbillies support Trump, which is not true. It's, like, it's just a narrative. He went to the South Bronx of New York and people were going crazy for you. You need to, you need to see it. It's, it's truly amazing. There were some baddies in the crowd as well. Oh my god. By the way, before I go any further, I recently dropped a poetry book. Love poems, love poems, love poems. And I'll be really grateful to anyone who checks that out. And it's only one dollar, guys. It's only one dollar. If you can get that and read it and leave a great review five stars i really appreciate it. it's one dollar uh the link is in the description please check that out guys and support i've got seven sales so far my, my goal well, last time i checked it was seven might have gone up but my goal is to reach 100 so about 93 sales to go before i reach 100 i really appreciate anyone who helps me get there so yeah one dollar guys one dollar goes a long way link in the description link in the description thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you, thank you. some really pretty woman uh, there was some pretty Latinas as well. I think the South Bronx is a heavy um, Latina population. If I'm not mistaken, I read somewhere, I was like, what? Not 55%. I think it's like 45% or something, Latina or something. I can't remember. It was a high number. It's a lot of them, though. It might be 55. South Bronx. I had a... Uh, this Brazilian girl yeah, a little while back do Brazilians count as like Latino, Latina a South American I'll just say you know she was she was she was thick she was pretty and it took me a while to get over she wasn't she wasn't good for me I, I knew that I needed a to, to move on but it was hard and then uh, <laughs> I realized that it was actually so dumb like it was very simple for the reason why I wasn't able to get over it it'll sound dumb but it, it was true I was following on Instagram you know when they say out of sight out of mind it's so true because I'd see her posting pictures and she'd be looking at my my story and stuff so Um, by the way, by the way, I have my list here, I have my list, man, I haven't written anything new in the past couple of days, but yeah, let me know, I'm gonna ask every video, let me know if there's anything you want me to any triggers you want me to add, and I'll, I'll add them if I think they are reasonable. I'll add them on here, and uh, I'll do them. So one of them is um, leave it here. One of them is bottle whispering. One of them is bottle whispering. Bottle whispering. Bottle whispering. Bottle whispering. So what was I saying? Um, oh yeah, so out of sight, out of mind. I unfollowed her on Instagram. I 
blocked her from viewing my, my story. So she can't, I hid my story from her. So yeah, cause you know, she'd post these pictures and she look, she'll be looking fine. And you know, that, that stirs up all sorts of memories and emotions and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, I need to, I need to, I need to stop. So that I unfollowed her and hid her story from, hid my story from her. And yeah, it's like, it was like magic. I just, I had a miraculous recovery. I moved on. So, but yeah, ever since then, it kind of, it, it changed my world because here in South Africa, we don't really have a lot of uh, Hispanic or like the, the South American variety of women, but we do have a small, small Brazilian demographic. Um, so that exposed me to new things. And let's just say, let's just say Latino women, Latino women can get it at, uh, at any time of the day. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, it's eye opening experience for sure. Yeah, but I don't, I don't have like any strong racial preferences. I believe pretty is pretty, you know. No one group has a monopoly on pretty. I just think pretty is pretty. Uh, you know, people can have their preferences, but it's it's still possible to end up liking someone that sits outside of your preference. For example, I prefer. There's a loud vehicle outside. I I prefer thicker women, you know, more shapely. That's my my general preference. That's my go-to. But in twenty in twenty fifteen. Um, I was in Prague, Czech Republic for this school trip and I met this Indian girl, short, skinny, wears glasses and I was really into her, like super, super into her and I, I loved spending time with her and yeah, she just, I don't think most people would, would say she's like some supermodel or anything like she's this incredibly beautiful woman just by aesthetic standards but to me in that moment she was when I when I in that period of time um, so it just made me think about how you know how they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder and all that sort of stuff love has an interesting way of Altering your perception of an ind individual, you start to view them in a multi-dimensional facet. It's kind of like looking at a prism of light, and as the prism moves around, you're getting all these different colors, and you're being presented with different images and stuff. So you, you view someone in their totality; their soul kind of shines through, and you view them that way. So, yeah, I was, I was super interested. So I was just thinking about that. Anyway, back to the, the Trump rally in the Bronx. It was, wait a second, actually. I was just booting up my laptop because I want to reference some, some notes I wrote down later. But anyway, um... He was just basically talking about the economy. The, the the sense that I got from watching, it was an hour and 33 minutes. It was quite long. I watched the whole thing, though. It was, it was amazing. I got the sense that these people are fed up. Because he, he also, what he does, which is very smart, he gets people to come up and speak. So, citizens, like regular people, will just get up and, and speak before and after he's given his speech and from what I heard people were just fed up because what the Democrats do a lot is they lie they lie about the economy saying the economy is great how many times have they said that the migrant crisis isn't a crisis at all it's lies it's a Republican conspiracy theory which is 
You have to be out of your mind. Why is Google Chrome updating constantly? I'm scared of these updates because I'm just looking at my laptop and it's telling me to this thing is updating. You never know what they what new features they implement in some of these updates. Microsoft said it's a new update. Your your computer will be constantly taking screenshots. Like multiple screenshots every second of everything you're doing. I'm like, wait a second, that seems like an invasion of privacy. And they say you can turn it off, but I'm like, why why is that a feature in the first place? That's not everything. You know, <laughs> you don't need to innovate with everything. Like, some things just, it's not worth it. Anyway, I got sidetracked. So, they'll say, like, the migrant crisis isn't a, isn't a real thing. Which is absurd. The border is wide open. People's communities are being affected. Schools in multiple uh, cities across across uh, the country there have been situations where schools uh, I'm thinking particularly about like New York where schools have to be shut down in order to house migrants so that they kick the kids out of school and say we're going to use this as a migrant shelter that's a real thing that happened and community centers as well have been used for that and public, public funding has been pulled from parks and recreational centers in order to fund uh, migrants uh, the, 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 to look after these migrants and stuff. It's like, people are fed up. Like, the citizens are fed up. Because people are struggling. The, the economy is not in a good shape, and people need as much help. They, they want to make sure that their tax... Because who's paying for this? Taxpayers. It's, it's all, all this money is taxpayer money. So they want to make sure that their taxpayer money is going towards helping them and not people of other countries who are entering the country illegally. You know what I'm saying? People are frustrated, man. So that's the sense I got. And uh, Biden is losing incredible support from the black community. I think, you know, historically black people in America always vote Democrat. It's actually ridiculous. It's embarrassing. Because you shouldn't vote on party lines. You should vote according to policy, not not if the person is Democrat or Republican. You should look, look at their policies. But black people typically vote like at rates like above nine percent, nine percent, something like that. Up to nine percent. And but this time around, Biden only has sixty-one percent of the vote. Trump has twenty-two. In twenty twenty, he had he had nine. Wait, how much did he have? I think he had eleven percent or nine percent. It was very low. I think it was nine percent. Now he has 22, so it's a, it's, a, it's a dramatic improvement. So, according to polls, and you're seeing, you're seeing uh, in these rallies more black people coming out and rocking merchandise that says uh, <laughs> niggas for Trump and stuff like that, <laughs> which is wild. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> So the mainstream media narrative is falling apart that the only people that support Donald Trump are racist and all this. It's nonsense. People are genuinely frustrated with the economy. People are hurting, man. Like the, the, the money is not stretching as far, which is why I turned on my laptop so I can share some facts with you. I was just learning about, I was, I was, I was uh, watching some news uh, that pertains to the closure of certain American businesses and just certain struggles pertaining to the American economy. Okay, so so a big thing that's been happening. You got fast food joints like McDonald's raising prices. So with McDonald's in particular, people are upset because McDonald's keeps upping their prices. And you know, McDonald's was always known as the place you go to for for deals. Historically, that's been the case, right? Historically, 
traditionally McDonald's. You go there for your value meals. They got the dollar menu. They got this menu. They got that menu for people who just want something cheap and quick. Might not be the healthiest food, but you know, you're not spending that much money on it, so it makes that's part of the deal. Good foods, fast food, right? But now they're charging basically as much as the mid-tier restaurants. So people are like, why the fuck would I shop at McDonald's? Why purchase my food at McDonald's when I can just go to an actual place that serves higher quality food for the same price? What's wrong with these people? But the reason why McDonald's is raising the prices, number one, inflation, Biden's economy is it's dog food. But also minimum wage price hikes. I mean minimum wage increase in places like California. Um that are not good. So people keep calling for higher minimum wage. Which they shouldn't be calling for. What you should be calling for is better economic policies that allow the wages you are getting currently to stretch further. Because <laughs> what happens when you raise minimum wage in such a terrible economy is it just creates more inflation. So basically they start so if businesses like McDonald's are forced by the government to pay you more this is by this is by, by the way this is this is just communism this shouldn't be a, a thing the government shouldn't be in, interfering in the private sector so much but anyway um if the government is forcing these businesses to start paying workers more money it increases the costs right the business costs so now it's costing you more as a business is costing you more to produce your products so what does that mean you're making less money which means you have to increase the prices of what you're selling in order to make profit or break even people don't realize the profit margins for a lot of these franchises are very thin so people look at mcdonald's as a whole and think, oh very wealthy company what you don't understand is each branch individual branch so your local mcdonald's they operate on very thin profit margins so it's not like they're making this incredible profit and they have all this money to spare and they can just afford to give people um a ton of cash and pay the employees because also 20 minute 20 dollars minimum wage is kind of insane for a job like for a job in which you're just working at mcdonald's that's because then you're earning more than okay so i did the maths on this 20 dollars minimum wage if you're working look at it this calculator let's pull up the calculator let's do some quick maths let's say 20 hello I need to get a new laptop. Twenty times let's say eight hours a day equals one sixty. I think the typical work uh weekly hours, you know, for McDonald's employees like forty, so one sixty wait. Twenty times eight to one sixty. Sorry, there was a bike outside. So I was saying, I think the typical work, the typical typical hours in a week a McDonald's employee might work is like forty hours. So we'll say twenty times forty, which is. <clears throat> 800, I guess 800 times four, you know, four weeks in a, in a month, more or less. 800 times, what's that, 3,200? Okay, so 3,200 a month, earning 3,200. So that's, let's say, dollar to rand. In South Africa, how much would you be earning? Jeez Louise. Give you 
earning almost 60,000, so you're earning 59,000 rand, which is... Bro, that's more than, like, some accountant... Yeah, definitely more than what a lot of accountants get, and mechanics, and engineers, and so on and so forth. Like, that is a lot of money to work at McDonald's. Um, in a year, how much is that? So... 3200 times 12. Why is this laptop so slow? Times 12. 38,400. 38,400 in rands. Let's see. Oh my god. So 708,280 rands. So you you're starting to approach a million rand per year. You're still a ways off by almost three hundred thousand. That's insane. To work at McDonald's, no shade to anyone that works at McDonald's, of course, but you have to understand these are jobs that anyone can do. These are not jobs that are in high demand. Anyone can go out and sign up for McDonald's. It's like the skill set required is not it's not a bad it's not a highly valued skill set you know you can get anyone to work at mcdonald's so the issue with that is it, it messes up the economy how does a free market economy work it's like the the skills are in the highest demand are the ones that get paid for the most that's why ceos get paid more than everyone else because their skill set is rare like the people who can organize these businesses and make the decisions that bring in profit and so on and so forth. This is why this, they're, they're pulling everything together and, and, and invest in the capital and all those sort of stuff. CEOs get paid the most because they have the rarest skill set and the rarest assets. So, so even though the person who might be a janitor is cleaning and is working very hard, even though that person is highly valued, their skill set is easily accessible if you can get anyone to do that job. So it doesn't make sense to pay you as much as the CEO, you know? You might be working harder. You might be working extremely hard being a janitor and all this sort of stuff, but again, it's about the value of your skills. Um, there's, a, there's a point I wanted to make that I've, it just left my mind. Anyway, so yeah, well, what this results in when, when you keep raising the minimum wage like this is these fast food joints are being pushed towards auto automation even faster. I saw a video of Wendy's, which is an American establishment, a uh, fast food joint. They're using, so in the drive throughs they're using robots now to, to take orders so no human contact at all the you know the, the, the screens but now it's like it'll be like a an, an ai assistant taking your order because they don't want to pay people anymore because it's like it's, it's getting too expensive so people will vote for an increase in minimum wage and what they don't understand is a business at the end of the day they've got to make money so they'll be like look if it's getting too expensive to pay people we'll just get robots <laughs> We'll just get robots to handle this job, and then we can save money. So you're, you're, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot, because now you just won't have a job. You're, you're pushing to get paid more, get paid more, get paid more. Now it's like, well, okay, you, you keep pushing, we're just going to have to fire you, or, or let you let you go. They won't fire you, but they'll, they'll start being mass layoffs. And that's exactly what we're seeing. 100 Red Lobsters closed down recently. You know Red Lobster, the, the, the restaurant? Well... 87 have closed, but they're going to close a total of 100. So 13 of them are still yet to be closed, but they're going to close soon. 100 red lobsters. Part of it was because of mismanagement, like red, Lo red lobster and the group that manages it have been making bad financial decisions, but also the economy. In a better economy, they might not have had to, to shut down. That's what analysts are saying. In a better economy, they could have, even even with this bad management, they could have braved the storm and, and come out on top. 
but uh, the economy crushed them. And we're seeing in certain places uh, was in and out in and out closed one of its branches in Oakland. Okay, that that was for different reasons. That was because of crime. Oakland has a lot of crime. I think it was in Oakland. I can't remember which which uh, city it was in. But you know, In and Out has never closed uh, a branch before. This is the first time they closed a the branch. But I think that was because of crime. But anyway, a lot of restaurants are closing down because of the terrible economy. People are choosing to cook at home as well. Some of them are just like, we're not even going to bother with, with eating out anymore. It's getting too expensive. We'll just cook at home, which is a healthier decision. Some are getting food from gas stations, which is, I don't know about that. You know, because gas stations, you can get cheap food. It's, it's becoming the alternative to McDonald's. Because McDonald's and places like McDonald's are getting too expensive. So some people are choosing to... get their food from from gas stations which are starting to serve that that market but uh, that's not healthy but you know it, it, it is what it is so yeah people are frustrated to groceries prices of groceries places like Walmart are, 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 are struggling targets people who, who don't typically shop at Walmart you know, it's like the middle class, kind of like lower middle class and low income earning people. At least I've heard those are the sort of people that will shop, shop at Walmart, like middle income and lower income. But now what we're seeing is people with higher income brackets are actually shopping at Walmart because that's how bad the economy is. People are trying to save money. Things are getting out of hand. Target is starting to lower prices as well to compete with, low, with Walmart. And yeah, it's, it's, it's creating a whole bunch of issues. The economy is not doing great at all. Biden keeps lying about inflation. He has this crazy lie he always tells on, on, on uh, when he's being interviewed that when he got into office, inflation was at 9%. <laughs> and I remember watching an interview. Uh, it was on uh, one of Biden, Biden's. Uh, I don't know if he's one of his advisors or like he. He's one of these people that uh, has something to do with uh, Biden's economic policies. He was being interviewed, and the person interviewing was was saying, "Why does Biden keep lying, saying inflation was at nine percent? It was at one point three percent, one point three, one point four." When, when Biden got into office, but he keeps saying when he got into office, it was at 9%, which is just a blatant lie. Like, that's factually incorrect. The interviewer was asking this guy this question, and the guy was like, oh, that's not what he meant. He meant, like, he inherited problems that would lead to inflation becoming 9%. And the interviewer kept saying, like, that's not what he's saying. He's saying when he got into power, inflation was at 9%. He said that numerous times. We have footage of him saying that, and they showed him the footage. And you're still like, oh, but he meant this, he meant that. It's like, that's not what he's saying. He's making people think that inflation was at 9% when he got into it. It wasn't. Trump's economy was booming. It was doing very well. Obviously, COVID kind of messed things up a little bit, but COVID wasn't his fault. Obviously, you can't blame Trump for, for COVID. That's insane. In fact, the Democrats were the ones who were imposing all these ridiculous um, lockdown restrictions and all the spending that like giving people money to stay at home racking up trillions of dollars of debt spending money they did not have which which created the inflation crisis we're seeing now or you're seeing now in America um bunch of bad economic decisions also all this foreign spending sending billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions tens and tens of billions to ukraine even though ukraine is running out of 
that they're losing that war. They are losing that war objectively. They are running out of men. They're literally getting 50-year-olds to, to fight. They're getting people with Down syndrome to fight. That's not made up. That's a real thing. That's how desperate they are for fighters. So they're, they're funding a... They, they keep telling you can keep fighting. We'll keep fighting. Imagine having a friend, right? That... Uh, is in a fight that they're clearly losing. And you keep taking them on. It, 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 the deep down is getting worse and worse and worse. And your friend is a genuine. And you keep turning and keep fighting. That's insane. With Ukraine, the best thing they can do is surrender. It's, it's too late. Surrender. And save lives. Now they're trying to... Because a lot of Ukrainian men... Fled the country. Because they didn't want to fight. Which I don't blame them. Because think about this, right? Imagine fighting in a war that's meaningless. You're just killing people and you don't know why. You're killing people because of disputes that have nothing to do with you. You don't hate them. They don't hate you. But they're being forced to fight and end someone's life for, for weird geopolitical reasons that have nothing to do with anything. It's just a few power hungry people at the top. It's meaningless, dude. Meaningless war. So yeah, I, I don't blame the Ukrainian men that that fled to other countries, but they're being called back. Like the government is actually trying to find these people and bring them back so that they can fight and die in ditches. A lot of these men. It's it's disgusting. But anyway, so uh, Biden and his friends, they keep funding that war instead of pushing for for a ceasefire and like for, for, for the, the, the killing to stop and a quick way to do that is to stop funding them and force them to surrender uh, America and, and the UN in per, NATO in particular have their own agendas that the, the, the reason why Russia invaded Ukraine was because of uh, NATO's expansion into Ukraine. And, and Russia said for decades, do not include Ukraine into NATO and we won't have problems. And there was an agreement made, I think, with the Bush administration that we will never expand into Ukraine. That's what NATO said. In the 90s, actually. It was in the 90s that they said this. We will never expand into Ukraine. And... Um, Lo and behold, decades later, someone actually predicted, uh, I think it was some American general, he said, he, in the 90s, he said, this is what's going to happen. People, these, these politicians are looking for a reason to get into a fight with Russia. So what they're going to do is they're going to expand into NATO. Russia is going to be forced to retaliate and invade. And then they're going to say, look, look what Russia is doing. We need, now, we need to, now we need to do something about Russia, da, 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 da. It's just an excuse, because Russia is a threat to them, it's an enemy, they want to get Russia out of the way, so that they have no one to oppose their globalist schemes. Um, it's a complicated issue, but long and short of it is, um, the, the long and short of it is, where was my tissue? Was clearly, clearly uh, agitated by American politicians and, and, and these, these war But yeah, America's funding that, spending billions of dollars on that, and that's also leading to money they don't have. <laughs> that's also leading to inflation. So Biden's economy is, is booty. And people are fed up. They're like, stop spending money on other countries. Spend money on us. You're spending money on all these migrants. I've talked numerous times about New York and it's giving uh, these migrants like $1,000 debit cards every month. 
I think like five thousand families got one thousand dollar debit cards or something. It was like a fifty something million dollar budget for these debit cards. They're giving these migrants one thousand dollars in debit cards so they can get food because they, they didn't like the food that we're getting in the shelters. That we don't like this food. Give us give us money to get our own food. <laughs> we're like, what the hell? Look at Where's the gratitude? What, why, why are you making these demands? So they've got literally got $1,000 per month to get their own food. Just insane. Just insane. And people are like, they've been begging for funding from the government to, to, to help with youth centers and, 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 and certain parts of in, city infrastructure that need help. And the government, I mean, the, 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 the municip municipality always be like, we don't have money, we don't have money. Now all of a sudden, the migrant crisis, all of a sudden they have money. People are like, what the hell? We thought you didn't have money. So people are upset. So yeah, it's a whole bunch of issues under Biden that people are upset about. The cross. The absolutely fuming. Fuming, fuming, fuming. Fuming, 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 fuming. So yeah, that's why Trump is so popular. Because people don't people remember things being so much better under Trump and they were It wasn't just that Trump wasn't that bad. Trump was great. He was a great president and black unemployment was at a historic low at the time. And Biden inherited that. He, he takes credit for it, but it's like like he's just benefiting off of Trump's work. It's like this guy did the homework and then you just before you could really finish it, you, you took it and, 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 and filled in the rest. You filled in the blanks. That's essentially what's happening here. Historic unemployment for blacks under Trump and, and, and the same for Hispanics and so on and so forth. The economy is doing great. Jobs. All that sort of stuff. Under Biden, a lot of that is going away. A lot of it is going away. So, yeah. People are fed up, man. It's not a black or white thing. It's an economy thing. It's a border security thing. It's a foreign policy thing. Biden's just terrible across the board. There's no way around it. Man. Trump is starting to look real good. The mainstream media lied so much in this guy's name, man. It's insane. It's the campaigns, making him seem like this devil. People are realizing it is all lies. And like, look at what the mainstream media is saying now. This is how you know they've, they've been lying to you all along. Look at what they're saying now. What are they saying now? They're saying the economy is not that bad. People are delusional. That's literally what they said. I was watching a CNN clip just now. This person from CNN was saying that voters are delusional. They think, maybe I can play it for you. Even though his team would argue vociferously, look, look at the job we've done right. since COVID. Look how we've repaired things. So how much of this is Trump amnesia, where people have deluded themselves so the economy was better than actually it was when Trump was in office? Listen to this. <laughs> so they're saying voters have deluded themselves. When people are going through stuff, right, and then there's there's genuine suffering, there's genuine frustration, and there's, there's genuine problems. This this woman was was giving us well, before Trump came up to speak. This 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 uh this I think she was Hispanic or black. I can't remember what she was, but she was talking about because of the crazy crime in New York. Uh, one of her sons got killed. She lost her other son to some other issue in New York, but one of her sons got killed because of gang violence. The media will say that New York doesn't have a crime problem. Crime is down in New York. Historic low crime in New York. Meanwhile, people's children are being killed in the street. But the mainstream media will tell you that crime is not a problem. Now this guy is saying that Biden's economy is actually amazing. Let me play that for you again. 
that President Biden would be in trouble, even though his team would argue vociferously, look, look at the job we've done yeah. since COVID. Look how we've repaired things. So how much of this is Trump amnesia, where people have deluded themselves, so the economy was better than actually it was when... So people have deluded themselves. You're delusional. You're delusional if you're taking note of the fact that your money's not stretching as far as it used to. You're delusional if you're just noticing your society collapsing around you. You're delusional if you're noticing that illegal immigrants are getting more care and attention than you or the homeless people in your neighborhood or homeless veterans, so on and so forth. You're delusional. This is what they say. They say this all the time. They go on, they go on camera and they lie. And they've been doing the same thing with Donald Trump for years, ever since he got into power in 2016. They've been lying. And people are realizing that, oh, we've been lied to. Like, you can actually track the lies, the lies about the, 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 a, certain, a certain virus. I don't want to say anything, otherwise YouTube will come for me. Um, lies about economy. Lies about the border. Lies, 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 lies about crime. Crime is down. Crime is down. No, it's not. What are you t- The amount of stories I, uh, that have, have, have been published and circulating in the media of, of, of women just being randomly punched in the face in New York by homeless people. Uh, it happens to a, a prominent actor as well. I forgot which actor it was. Uh, actor gets punched in the face in New York. Steve Buscemi appears to be looking at his phone moments before he was randomly punched in New York City. Buscemi was attacked in Manhattan last week, according to his publicist. Police on Tuesday identified the suspect as 50-year-old Clifton Williams. Steve Buscemi, you'll know him. He, let me see what movies he's acted in. Boardwalk, Empire, Reser- Reservoir Dogs, Fargo, Con Air, Grown Ups with uh, Adam Sandler. He was in Monster Inc., but that's an animation, so he did voiceover. He was in Armageddon with Bruce Willis, The Big Lebowski. Apparently, he's in The Sopranos. He's in Mr. Deeds with Adam Sandler. So he's, he's just one of those actors, if you see his face, you'll recognize him. But yeah, he got punched. He got socked in the face, dude, in New York. It's it, it's so prevalent, dude. It keeps happening. They had to send the armed guard to the uh, the National Guard to the, to the train stations, the subway. Crime is down, but you have to have armed soldiers in your subway. Wow. Huh? Huh? Doesn't make any sense. People, people are fed up, dude. And then you've got clowns like this guy. I don't know his name, but it's on MSNBC on the Morning Joe show. He's he's saying that the economy has no there's no issues. So yeah. Clearly there are issues, guys. That's why I keep telling people, stop listening to mainstream media so much. Don't get your, your news from TikTok. Don't get your news from all these weird places. Because a lot of these people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. There's also a real thing of, of a lot of these social media influencers being paid by, um, by Democrat politicians to repeat certain talking points. That's a real thing. They've, some people have come out and said, I got approached... Like, they send me an email saying, we'll pay you if you promote this. We'll pay you if you promote that. Yada, 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 yada. Like, that's a real thing. So sometimes some of these accounts that you'll be seeing on, on social media that will say things that run contrary to what's happening in reality, a lot of them have been paid to say it. 
it, 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 it props up the image of the government. It's propaganda. That's how propaganda works. You think, you think, you think governments don't engage in propaganda? Of course they do. A lot of them do. Not always, but this Democrat party is definitely engaged in propaganda. You can't say the economy is doing well when it's clearly not. And then they keep saying it, they keep saying it, and, you, and that's not propaganda, of course, it's propaganda. They're trying to distract people. They're trying to tell you, don't believe your lying eyes. Don't believe your empty pockets. We know that you can't afford rents. We know that when you're, when you're paying bills, you have to choose between getting food or doing your laundry. Or paying the electric bill. We know that things are tough, but it's because you're delusional. <laughs> This is what this guy is saying. He's saying you're delusional. How, bro? If people keep, if people vote for Joe Biden, man, ah, oh, death. I'll be shocked, dude. Because it's like, at that point, you're begging. You're begging for punishment. You're begging for a bad economy. Anyway, I rambled. But I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, oh my god. I didn't promote my book. I'll promote it at the beginning. I'll, I'll insert a clip where I'm promoting it. Don't forget to buy my book. My poetry book. The link is in the description. Please leave a review. I got seven sales. When, when I last checked. Which means we've got 93 left. Until we reach... 100 sales, which is my goal. Please and thank you to everyone who supports and uh, leave a review. Leave a review. I really appreciate it, guys. I really do. If you made it all the way to the end, drop an uh, American flag. You know, we're talking about America, talking about American politics. Drop an American flag if you made it all to the all the way to the end. That's crazy. Because, you know, um, I'm rambling now. I'm talking about some things that some people might find boring or upsetting. But it is what it is. So if you made it to the end, I appreciate you. Drop an American flag so I can see that you made it to the end. I always appreciate people that watch to the end. Because that's a lot of time. I really appreciate you giving me that amount of time. Uh, yeah, I like to pray at the end of my videos and get into it. Dear Father God, thank you for this individual audience right now. Thank you for making them whole, unique, and kind. Them on a path to peace, prosperity, and purpose. Thank you for blessing this person with wonderful people in the life who love them, take care of them, bring them the best out of them. And thank you for maintaining the people that are there to do the same thing. Thank you for blessing this person with love, with romance, with a wonderful marriage, with the person that loves them and will always be for them. Thank you for blessing this person with a spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for all the wonderful things in their life. And by giving thanks, they can find peace, contentment, and attract even more blessings. Let your presence be found in this person's life so they know that you're God, that you're real, that you love them, you're always going to be there for them. Good health, found life, and happiness over this person. Everyone that care about you, my name, I pray in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, 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 am